Today, I'll be sharing with you guys my two favorite quad exercises, why I like them, and some of the important technique cues that I use to get the most out of your leg workouts. Once again, I want to hear what are your favorite two exercises that you always include into a quad focused portion of your leg day. I'll give you, say, 15 seconds to do that whilst I take a sip of my tea. So drop a comment below and let me know. And while you're there, please do give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. <sighs> okay, so quads, let's get stuck straight into it. If you followed any of my work in the past, you can probably guess what this one is going to be. It's the hack squat machine. Now, I do understand that a few of you won't have this machine available and some of you may find that it hurts your knees or perhaps the machine you have isn't appropriate for you for some other reason. So I will talk about other alternatives that you can use as well. But first, let's talk about why I choose something like the hack squat over other squat variations and why it's been a mainstay in nearly all of my leg days for close to five years now. First of all, I prefer machines over a free weight squat, such as a barbell back squat or a front squat, due to the position it allows you to take your body into. First, let's take a look at my barbell back squat. See, I clearly have sufficient mobility to be able to perform this exercise to achieve full depth with my hamstrings on my calves. This position is really important to be able to give the quads, particularly the teardrop muscle or the vastus medialis, the lower portion of the quad, a complete stretch. However, take a look at my torso angle relative to the floor and the weight. There's a slight forwards lean. For every degree of forwards lean that there is, that there is going to be extra strain and tension going through my back muscles. Now, this isn't bad whatsoever as it's important to be exposing your back to these kinds of forces if you want to improve its strength. But for now, keep that in the back of your mind for a moment while we take a look at the hack squat machine as a comparison. As you can see here, I hit the exact same range, if not more range of motion at my knee and hip joints. But what's, what's the main difference? If we were to reposition this as if I was squatting flat on the floor and not on the angle of the machine, you'll see my torso is completely upright. This position is physically impossible for me to be able to access with a free weight squat without falling over. So why is this important? Well, what is the goal with training? We want to expose your muscles, in this case the quads, to as much tension as possible. Now, whether that means training to failure or training with a few reps left in the tank or reps in reserve, the reality is we need to have the ability to take our bodies relatively close to that point at some point during the set. And out of these two exercises, if I took them both towards that failure point, the hack squat will create a much more significant stimulus on my quads as opposed to the back squat, which will still create a fair bit of stimulus on my quads, but also a large stimulus on my back due to the positioning of the weight on my body, which again is completely unavoidable. This is actually the biggest counter argument that people use against the use of machines. They say that machines aren't good because they take you out of your natural range of motion. But the question is, what if your natural range of motion is actually not a good thing? Because no matter how good you are, no matter how mobile you are, you'll never be able to get into a position on a barbell squat that allows you to push your quads as hard as a machine-based squat would without your lower back fatiguing first. This is the difference between a concept known as task failure versus muscular failure. This concept is pretty simple. When you hit a failure point, did your muscle hit a failure point or did you fail at the task itself due to technique, coordination or some other variable such as other muscles fatiguing first? The back squat is a good example of a task failure exercise where no matter how hard you push and drive yourself into the ground, it's your lower back and technique that will always give out first. Whereas on the hack squat, due to the machine giving you plenty of bracing support and the relative simplicity of the movement and the position it puts your body into, when you hit failure here, you'll be much closer to a true failure point in your quads, which is part of the goal when it comes to training to add size to your quads. So 
What are some of the tips that I have for this exercise and what should you do if you don't have this exercise or machine available? First is foot placement. How high and how wide? This really depends on your personal structure. To keep it simple, you want to put your feet into whatever position allows you to reach as much range at the knee joint as possible with your feet staying flat on the ground with an even pressure being placed through your foot. If you place your feet too low, You'll be able to get the range of motion at the knee joints, but you'll feel yourself driving onto your toes and losing overall stability. If you place your feet too high, you'll probably find too much weight on your heels and your back will start coming off the back pad through the movement. In terms of width, play with it a little and see what width feels most natural. Often the simplest way to determine this is to jump up and down on the spot a few times or set up as if you're about to take a giant leap forwards. This will typically put you into your most comfortable and strongest position, give or take a few inches and degrees of rotation of the foot. Most importantly, don't ever try to copy someone else's technique as every person's structure is different, even if they are of the same height. You have to consider things like femur or upper thigh length relative to lower length leg, uh, lower leg length and torso length, along with your own personal mobility at your ankle joint as well. So if you want to see this in action, check out the leg day video with my training partner, Sherelle Grant, where we discuss differences in our structures and what this means for positioning. I'll put a link up here in the corner and also add one to the description box for you with a direct timestamp to where we talk about this in the workouts. Now, what if you don't have this available in your gym or if the machine you have isn't really a good one or comfortable for you? If you don't have one available, that's okay. If we focus on the principles as to why I like this exercise so much, it's because of the stability and the closeness to muscular failure we can get without other regions taking over. So any other squat machine or leg press might be suitable, including Smith machine squats. The reason I like these is because of the stability they provide and how they allow you to put your body into positions where other muscles like the lower back typically won't fatigue earlier than your quads. You can even look at single leg exercises that allow you to manipulate your body position more easily to reduce the forces being put through your lower back. Which brings us to my next favorite exercise and one that probably added the most amount of size to my legs many years ago in my competitive bodybuilding days, which is the Bulgarian split squat. This was popularized heavily within the bodybuilding community by one of my good friends, John Meadows, but it has of course been around for decades as a tool to improve jump power, sprint speed, and overall leg strength. John Meadows was the first person I'd ever seen doing the Bulgarian split squat of death though, and most importantly, taking out the most common issue from a muscle building perspective, which is the lack of stability by simply holding onto something for balance. Now, if you've never done a Bulgarian split squat drop set of death, I do believe it is something absolutely everybody should try at least once. And it has been a regular feature in our training camps over the years that we run together. I'll be honest, it's probably overkill, nine times out of 10, but I do believe for you to be able to train your body for progression, you need to have some idea as to where limits truly lie and exactly what you're capable of. The big reason why I'm such a big fan of Bulgarian split squats is due to what's happening at the rear leg more than anything else. Because yes, the front leg is doing a ton of work and yes, you can take it close to failure with your legs fatiguing before anything else provided you have the right setup, but what makes these so unique is what the rear leg is doing. You see, it's not just the front leg that's going through knee flexion and extension, it's the rear leg that is also going through knee flexion and extension, just in a slightly different degree of hip extension. This is training the muscle into its fully lengthened position, which most of the research tends to point towards being a very important position from a muscle building perspective, and overall, a largely undertrained position by most people. Other exercises that allow you to access this position are exercises like sissy squats, although it is hard to really get much out of them due to the balance and coordination required. So there you have it guys, my top two movements for quads. 
Hope you guys learned something useful through this video. And if you have any follow-up questions, please do leave them below. And I'll see you guys next time. Done.